The Small Business Show, episode 147 for Wednesday, November 29th, 2017. Uh, Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners. This episode is sponsored by Storyblocks. We're at storyblocks.com slash SBS. That's SBS for Small Business Show. You can get their triple bundle for just the price of one of them, which is $149. we will talk more about that in a little bit here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? You have a good Thanksgiving there? Thanksgiving was stellar. Yeah, thanks. It was, it was easy. We were home and all that good stuff. But you were out uh, gallivanting nice. the, uh, the sites of the big city. We were. We were at, at out in New York visiting my daughter and uh, seeing the parade, which we usually go to. And I think this is our 10th, ninth or 10th year out wow. there. So it was, it was great. It was awesome. I mean, it was warmer out there than in, uh, than some days anyway that it was in California. So we had a great huh. time. That's cool. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's yeah. great. Took the, took the boats out in Central Park, which was cool. And uh, had, had a really nice time out there. Nice. Yeah, but I'm like glad to were, be back. You were doing all the fun stuff. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. so you were able to get into the, the VIP party. Nobody made copies of your of your badges. No, nope. because po- yeah, I saw you posted those with the with the uh, barcodes on them. And I thought, hmm. yeah, well, you know, my friends, I just posted to my. Yeah. You know, oh, friends, I see. I okay. And it's such a small. Uh, there's only about, I don't know, maybe. Uh, well, th- I guess there's it's a sponsor party and this may be, well, I guess there's a couple hundred people there, but it's, they probably only have uh, eh, a couple hundred. So they, they kind of have a sense of who's coming and who's not. Got it. So. Got it. Okay. Right. But yeah, that would be good. That would be a good way to do it. I thought they about certainly. it. I'm like, yeah, I have yeah. to drive all the way down. I could, oh, and, yeah. yeah, that's right. I can remember the knowing guys that used to do that in the old Mac world days, uh, photocopy and getting the full pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was right when color printers and color copiers were uh, dating myself now, but uh, those were coming out and you could go, plop it on the old glass and make a copy and get yourself into all the sessions in Mac world. <laughs> yeah. They've changed that now. Trade shows have I'm like sure. RFID and or conferences of course. With RFID and yeah, tags yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay. They don't, they deserve to be hacked once in a while after I paid thousand uh, dollars for a drop for uh, Wi-Fi into uh. my, my booth for years, uh, they can, they can afford it. Yeah. They can, they can eat that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, of course that yeah. show doesn't exist anymore. So maybe they couldn't. It doesn't. It. Yeah. doesn't. Yeah. But even, but all these, you know, shows, they really want to control. It's all about, you know, the location, right? Keeping, uh, you, you're a captive audience and, yes. uh, they want to keep, uh, keep everybody paying those bills and stuff. And, uh, so I think what a great segue. I thought we would st- talk today about location for your small business and where you are located and how it can be such a huge factor. Um, you know, even, you know, if all your sales are online, where you locate your business is still critically important on, on so many fronts. So I thought we would uh, at least skim the surface a little bit today and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, for sure. Because you're right. It, it, you know, when you presented me with this topic, my and you were like, we should talk about location. And of course, I've I mean, I've run businesses with brick and mortar and all that stuff. But yeah. most of what I've done has been online. But me even too. that yeah. matters big time. It does. It yeah. does matter. And, and you know, from my I have uh, some experience in, in all these different types or, or the three types of, of locations that I think we could you know hit on today. And I'll talk about my experience and pros and cons, but like I said, even if you're just shipping everything out or even if you're using a logistics center and you have no inventory and you need to put, you know, people in seats, answering phones or managing your website, or even if you're working out of your house, you know, location is critically important uh, in, 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 for so many different reasons. So many different. So, so let's, let's, so what I thought we do since, you know, we, we could talk for hours on this topic. we'll, We'll let's chat about, what I would consider three of the main different types of okay. locations. And then we'll talk about what could be the most important thing when you're getting into a space is the lease. Yes. Uh, and all these things that are encompassed in that lease and how to watch out for those kinds of things. Yes. Sound good? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yes. Let's go. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So let's talk about, you know, the most obvious small business people think about, oh, I'm, a, you know, small business owner, I need a retail, if you're in a retail business or, or you have some business online, which is kind of, I think most small businesses have morphed, at least I hope they have into, well, we have a location, but we also have our website and we do all this stuff and we ship stuff or we promote 
things or whatever. Uh, and that's a retail location. And in a retail location, I think you're, what you're really paying for is traffic. You know, your, your space is really your part of your marketing budget and you're paying for either foot traffic. Uh, if you're in a strip mall or a regular kind of mall or any kind of place that gets lots of traffic or, or car traffic that drives by and sees your signage and that kind of thing. Um, and, and I think there's some important things to, it's one of my least favorite types of locations and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah. So tell me why go. Yeah, go. Well, it's extremely restrictive on, uh, and, and I understand the, the, I think the reason why is because they're trying to present, you know, a certain, uh, message to the people that are there all day and that kind of stuff. But it, it's restrictive in the sense of, um, what kind of signage you can use, uh, what you can really do there, uh, getting creative with your marketing. It's very restricted uh, and it's very expensive. And, and those, those things kind of all, you know, uh, track in the, the, the negative column for me, but they have obviously needs. I mean, people that, that need, like if you're in the iPhone repair business, you need to be in a retail spot if you're doing local service sure. because people, people want to drop their phones off and they want to go do that kind of stuff. And the, um, it's absolutely the way, the way to go. So um, I, I've done, um, I've done retail twice with the same business, multiple yeah. locations, actually more than twice. Uh, but I was involved in the, in the negotiation of the retail lease twice. And it really, the, the hardest part is, is picking the right place to be. Yeah. Uh, if you want, like if you want foot traffic or if you don't want foot traffic, well, if you're, right? Yeah. If you're paying for it, you, you know, like if you're, if you want tra that traffic, which uh, this is, you know, obviously the reason you'd be there, yeah. uh, you need to, I mean, who's the anchor, you know, what is the draw? Because you as a small business owner and, and, you know, people may not be beating your door, beating down, uh, you know, your door to find you. So you're paying for the, uh, uh, to be associated with whoever else is in that, uh, yes. you know, complex. And, and, you know, if, if you're, I can remember, uh, my real estate agent taking us around, well, this place is pretty inexpensive, but it's only made up of little small businesses, right? And so you have to have a specific reason to be going there. But if you're like in a retail location, it has like a, a grocery store or some massive draw, like a, you know, Walmart, Walmart or some kind yeah, of big right. thing like that, right. where people are coming over and over and over and over, you're going to pay more for those places. And it, it is really important to, uh, to pay attention and see, you know, who's there, what's around you uh, that's going to get people in the door. Well, and also how that fits with your business, right? When we yeah. first rented space for computer nerds, that was the business down in Austin that we rented, wound up renting retail space. The first time we rented, it was space with signage, yeah. but it was mostly offices. So, it, it you know, oh, every yeah. office that was there you could put your sign out on the, you know, both on the front and then, or uh -huh. they would do it for you. Actually, you didn't even have to do it because they, they wanted your sign, your, your name to match in with theirs. Yep. So like we gave them our, our font and our lettering, but they had the sign carved in their colors and their shape and size and all that stuff to fit yep. the, the little, you know, um, uh, strip mall or whatever you want to call it there. But it was really an office park even though we yes. had this stuff and really it was, if somebody came in the door and it wasn't one of our employees, that was a shock to us. We, uh, we weren't really it. expecting, yeah, sure. you know, but, um, but th that was the right thing for us at that point. We had built up a business based on, you know, TV ads and well, actually it started with radio ads and then TV uh -huh. ads and print ads and you know, those types of things. And, uh, and we were getting all of our business that way. None of our business was done, uh, with drop offs or or in person, it was I mean, it was done in person, but we were going to people's. You were there. Offices. Right. Yeah. Right. So you had your tech, a place for your text to start the day, if you will, or to co congregate, yeah, to congregate, to do yeah. so, if somebody needed to bring work back to the bench, we had uh -huh. the bench. And we, of course, we had that's where the phones rang and, and we did all that stuff there. But the nice part was. It was real cheap. I mean, we were paying, yeah. you know, a few hundred dollars a month for yeah. a, a relatively sizable space. 
Uh, but there was no one was drawing foot traffic and we weren't paying for that. And that's OK. Yeah, and that was OK. And, and, yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because and, and I'm mentioning like three different kinds of spaces. I actually completely neglected to uh, think about office space because it's uh, it, it, and that, that's a great opportunity uh, for especially when you're just starting out or if you don't have to have that foot traffic, right. but you need that kind of thing and you can find it and you can get into some obscure little places that it doesn't matter. Right. And yep. maybe you, they can see your sign from a road or something like that, but no one's going to come in. I, I think that's a, yeah, it's a, a mild, great idea. Mild branding was really yeah. what we got out of the sign. Uh, yep. And that, that was fine. I mean, it, anybody that happened to drive by this place, which was kind of on a not very busy road, uh, we, cool. we was sort of half residential and, and half commercial, but it was fine. It was great. And, there was, yeah. you know, there was like a burger joint nearby and things that we could, you know, if you needed to run sure. out and get food, you, you could do that without yep. getting in your car. And uh, yeah, yeah, it worked awesome. out. Yeah, it worked out really well. And it was like I said, I mean, it was dirt cheap. You'd be shocked what it how little it costs to rent just office space which yeah, is because there's a lot of it too yep right and it's typically a lot of it and i think retail is uh you know supply and demand and and you want to be at a certain spot and you're you know you want to be associated with other re certain retailers that are there so you often you know are, are going to pay for it and when you're looking at at where to go the one thing that to think about uh, in a retail uh, you know location is is there anyone else in your particular business uh, or realm of business in that same uh, area? Oh, yeah. And what's the what's the local competition? And often the lease that you'll wind up signing will have an exclusive use, uh, you know, part of it that you will or the landlord will agree that, hey, if you're, uh, you know, a, a nail salon or a pharmacy or a yogurt place, well, we're not going to rent to another one of those, you know, types of entities, yep. you know, that kind of stuff. Or if you're a, you know, electronic repair place or, you know, that kind of thing, you, they, they don't want to have more than one. Right. Um, right. But yeah. If you're, if you're yeah. counting on foot traffic to serve you, you, you don't want to have to have, you, you, once the person is there, you don't want them trying to choose between you and, and right. you know, the, the person right next door that yeah. does exactly the same thing. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that, uh, I'm, I'm going to mention over and, and sometimes over. Sometimes you, you know, in those retail yeah. places, you have to agree to be open certain hours too. Well, that's absolutely right. And so when you're, when you're looking at retail, you need to actually get those details when you're way before you've decided this is the place you need to know, you know, what are the signage requirements and, and what are the costs? Oftentimes they have signage programs that you're just like, Oh, we have to order from this vendor yep. and it has to have these specifications and it's going to cost, you know, eight, ten thousand $10,000 or whatever for these things. And you're going to pay for it. So you need to know that before <laughs> you need to know that are what requirements for open hours, you know, are, are there, if there are, if there are, um, right. Right. if there are. And then one of the things that, and, and I was a, you know, relatively newbie in, in the retail locations, but if you wanted your sign on the monument that on the street, well, that was an additional monthly rent. <laughs> and so you would have to pay an additional charge to have your sign up there. So you need to know that before. And then the, the scariest one, which is, you know, it's not, not uncommon, but are you going to be required to have some kind of revenue share? Is it rent plus a percentage of your revenue? And uh, that's that not, paying? that's not rare. Uh, at right, all. right. Right. Yeah. So you, you need to look at that, those things yeah. before you fall in love with the space. You need to ask for like a, you know, Hey, give me a sample lease. Give me a, or a one page, you know, details. So I know what I'm getting into. Cause you, you, you want to, cross out that space right away if it if it's going to require something that you're just not happy with yeah no yeah. It, it's true yeah and i you know i i might be jumping around here but uh but i do i want to talk about the 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 some some of the other terms of the lease especially the the whole triple net thing uh, yep but first can we talk about our sponsor shannon yeah, All absolutely. Right, we got to pay the rent. Well, that's right. You got to be able to pay the lease. Yeah. <laughs> so our first sponsor for this episode is Storyblocks. We're at storyblocks.com slash SBS. You get access to a deal that really is unlike anything we've ever seen before. It is. Yep. They have uh, it, it's an it's a stock image service. It's a stock video service and stock audio. Now, what I mean by that is they've got over 400,000 images, over 150,000 videos in the video service, over 100,000 audio clips in the audio service that 
you can, once you have a subscription, you can download and use royalty free. And your use on those goes beyond your subscription. Their, their subscriptions are yep. a year. It's 149 bucks for a subscription to any one of these services. Normally with our deal, storyblocks.com slash SBS, you get the triple bundle images, video, and audio for the price of one, 149 bucks. That's it. You can download anything and you can use it even past when your subscription expires. Of course, I'm yep. sure they would like you to renew, but if you don't, no problem. You, whatever you've downloaded during that, that subscription is yours, royalty-free, and you can use it on your website. It's it, the Commercial license is totally fine. Obviously, also okay for personal projects. So you could use it on your website for your business. If your kid's doing a project at school, you know, yeah. they can use some of that, that, that art that's there. No problem. It's all good. You want to use it as your jingle. You want to use it as your podcast theme music. Go yep, to the audio you're on library. hold. Yeah, you're on hold music in your music. your yeah. your phone system. If you've got it, needs it. Your vid, some videos running in your lobby. That that's it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. don't don't think that people haven't been dinged for using commercial music, unlicensed commercial music <laughs> yeah, in their on I'm hold sure. thing. It happens all the time. Yeah. Yep. So it really it's it's a great service. We've been using it here for some of the stuff that we do. Uh, it, it really. You got to check it out. And for 149 bucks, it's an easy expense to capitalize across a, a full year. So check it out. Go to storyblocks.com slash SBS, small business show, S-T-O-R-Y-B-L-O-C-K-S dot com slash SBS to get all the stock images, video and audio you can imagine for just 149 bucks. Our thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Sweet. Yeah. Good deal. So, yeah. So uh, it, it, back to, you know, paying attention to all these details, you know, no matter what you do, a lot of the things we're going to repeat here and uh, the rest of the show, uh, it, but the details are what is the killer in these things. Uh, and if you've if you've Always. done a few of these deals and and look at these leases and uh, we're going to get into the lease here in just a few minutes, but let me, let me run through the, this, a few other things on, okay. the, on the, the space type and then we'll get, we'll jump in. I yeah. know lawyer Dave, lawyer Dave loves to talk about this, uh, <laughs> this paperwork stuff. So we talked about There's retail and office. With me. <laughs> that's all right. That's right. One of the things, no matter what type of space you get, you really have to think carefully is, how much space do you really need? I mean, and, and, and it goes both ways. If you, you know, have calculated out that, that you can squeeze into, you know, X number of square feet, is that going to give you enough uh, space to grow? If you, if you're planning on growing your business, adding employees, storage, inventory, whatever it is, uh, meeting rooms, think about it. You don't want to move in and 10 days later, when you move all your stuff in, go, Wow we don't have enough room. Yeah. And, and this has definitely happened to me on the flip side. If you only need 5,000 square feet, don't rent 10. Um, think about th things to ask the, the, the land Lord or the owner of the building is, Hey, is there additional flex space available? Do we can, if you're in an industrial area, can we dump a container, a uh, shipping container in the parking lot? So I can get an additional, you know, uh, eight, or, you know, a few hundred square feet of temporary storage, lots of stuff like that. Think about what, what you can go in and out of and can you shrink and can you grow in that same development without having to pay massive moving uh, costs. Um, so on to the next industrial space, which I, I know and love very well because <laughs> um, I've been in it most of my life. But these are, you know, larger warehouses, flex space, whether it's uh, office, lab uh, spaces, that kind of stuff. Typically higher ceilings, you know, 25, 30 foot ceilings, much lower cost per square feet typically than retail and, and even office space um, because you're probably out in, you know, maybe in the middle of nowhere. Right, and, right. And where the, the land is cheap. Um and, you know, uh, one of the things I love about uh, about spaces is coming up with creative ways to gain more space. And I, and I always uh, probably about 15 years ago, we rented the spot and I we didn't have enough space. And we built a mezzanine and, uh, you know, a second story out in the warehouse and over a certain portion of it. 
and I've just fallen in love with the space like this because it's so flexible. You can put people up there, you can put storage up there. Um, and it's typically space you're not paying extra rent for. Right. Uh, yeah. It's a one time cost of building yeah. whatever that mezzanine costs. Yeah. yeah. So you could have just added, you know, a couple thousand square feet to your, to your building and, and lowered your occupancy cost, you know, dramatically. Yeah. Um, and, and along with the same, you know, uh, whether it's retail, office, industrial, zoning is a big deal. If you've listened to the show for a while, you might have picked up that I'm not a big fan of authority uh, and <laughs> having people tell me what I can and cannot do. I, I really kind of dislike, but I live within the realms of that. But you want to be careful in when you before you sign that lease is it will okay i've got two businesses maybe or something else can we want to do this want to do that i want to store my this here like i mentioned a shipping container you know are people going to freak out if you start doing some kind of you know crazy stuff or pushing the envelope you, you got to think about it who your neighbors are you know and how that impacts what you're going to do what's it zoned for ha, have uh, you ever petitioned to have zoning changed for a space you own you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of asking forgiveness and not asking permission. Yeah. Uh, so, so, no, I have not. But I've had to rein things back in. Um, in, in one of the things that we had done is we were in an industrial building and we, you know, started pushing the envelope on space and we kept raising the height of our, our pallet storage mm -hmm. uh, and just took it to the absolute maximum of everything. And we ran up against um, a fire marshal that just wasn't really happy with how things were going and primarily built around the sprinkler and the volume of sprinklers that uh, or the volume of water that these sprinklers could put out in the case of a fire. Sure. Even though uh, everything was kind of, you know, we didn't have a lot of fire uh, hazard stuff there. They, they wanted these things covered. And we had basically what it came down to was the, the pipe into the building was not large enough to handle the volume for the type of storage that we wanted to have. And, and we actually had to move. Um, wow. We got out of the lease, out of the lease early. We only stayed a year. We fought the fire department for you know about eight months out of that year. And we had to move down the road into a building that had that bigger volume. Never would I have thought to ask, hey, what are the, the, the you know, foot per second, you know, ratings yeah. on your fire system? Because I just didn't think, well, they, they built these for high storage. It doesn't matter, but it does matter. Huh. And these kind of obscure things uh, that, you, I, that you run up. Yeah, I know my father-in-law runs a, uh, land care business down actually in Florida and he's grown it substantially. I think he's got close to 300 employees now. Uh, nice. Yeah. Maybe to have him on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Actually it'd be great to have him on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's a fascinating guy and really uh, obviously smart about how to do this stuff. And I, and he, he got some new space, got some new land rather built his new space. And in part of that, you know, he has all of his trucks leaving from there Every morning at about the same time uh, to go out and, you know, go to wherever they're going to go to to do yep. their, their work for the day. And so he had to work with the town or the city to put a traffic light in on this street. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big, right. That's a big deal. So, yeah, yeah. you want to yeah. you want to think about red tape and headaches. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. that's it. But they wouldn't let him build there. If he didn't. So I think he sure, had to cover sure. the cost of the traffic light. But even if you're willing to pay for it, uh, it, you know, you're now disrupting a road like there's yeah. there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions about that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a great yeah, story, but, I'm sure. But that's yeah. that's the kind of thing is just, you know, think, thinking about, OK, what you know, where am I now? Especially if you're talking about getting your own industrial space where you're the one doing the improving on there. And part of the reason you're buying it is so that you can expand thinking about, all right, well, at what point are the people around me? Like you said, you're pushing the envelope with perhaps what you're doing. Maybe what right. you're doing isn't isn't the problem. How much of what you're doing yeah, becomes that's the true. problem? No, you you got it. You got it. When you have people coming and going, or you know, yeah. vehicles, or this, or equipment. I mean, it. Everybody starts to look and like, what's going on? You know, and and I've had that over and over and over, really pushing the envelope of what you could do because that's a fun part of business, right? I yeah, mean, I love that stuff. I'm like, well, sure, we could do that. I'm always open for ideas, but everybody around you may have 
have a different uh, yes. different thing. And, and I want to come back and talk about that owning versus uh, you know renting leasing because well, there's some yeah. I've got a, a friend who's got a t-shirt uh, uh, uniform business that is thinking about buying some land and 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 doing this. And so yep. I, you know I I know and of course I've heard people suggest this, but I think it's what you've done. Uh, they talked about him owning the land with one company, owning the building with another, or maybe owning the building and the land with one company and then leasing that to your yep. business so that you're in yeah. both businesses separately. Yeah. Well, owning it in it, 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 a, you know, a simple thing is just owning it personally and then leasing it to your business uh, has some dramatic tax advantages for both your individual uh, taxes, as well as your, as your company. And it, if you ever go to sell your business, oftentimes, you know, they may not want your land or your building. So you're, you can keep that asset, even though the company has paid for it over the years uh, and made the, you know, mortgage payment or the, yep. S, you know, the, uh, uh, the, you know, the SBA loan, however you have it structured. Uh, and, and then you have this, you know, asset that's performing and generating revenue that you get to keep and manage. So uh, it's it's a we can do a whole show on that because it, it is such a powerful way to build wealth. Um, in some parts of the country, it's a little harder, namely where I'm at in, in California in the Bay Area, where real right? estate is, is just insane. But in other parts of the country, you know, you can buy a building for the price of a car, you know, and and that that can be a, a income producing for multiple generations. And uh, it's it's it'll it's you can become a whole nother business for you to own managing real estate uh, that that you didn't even think of. It's, it's powerful. Huh. It's powerful. Yeah, so let me, let me talk about the one last type of uh, what I would classify real estate is I kind of call it the combo, which is industrial. Um, it's kind of like your office thing we mentioned earlier, it, but it's, it's an industrial space, but it's got a si signage on, on the, towards a road or something where there's a lot of traffic and it may have a, you know, a storefront or a little bit of retail that you're, you could kind of convert to retail up front. And I, I love this combination because uh, it allows you to capture maybe a, a, a new type of business that you otherwise wouldn't do. If you're in the box business or whatever kind of, you know, whatever inventory business, and maybe you can throw a sign up in the parking lot and, and people can walk in and buy your product that you otherwise are missing out on retail sales. You know, same if it's, if you're web-based, um, Typically, you're paying an industrial uh, rate to rent it or to own it. And there are none of the typical retail or maybe even office type of regulations and things that would keep you from uh, experimenting with new things. I really like the concept of it. It's worked really well for me over the years. Huh. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and yeah. you know, when you're improving upon the land, either building a building if there's nothing there or, yep. it, you know, it, it expanding the building that's there. Always thinking about not just what you need it for today, but making sure, like you said, with your mezzanine, doing things that can be used in very flexible ways going forward, either by you uh, for things that you haven't thought of yet. Or yes. if, like you said, if somebody buys your business, but you retain the building, uh, you know, you can lease that out to somebody else. And the more flexible it is, well, the more customers you might have. Yep. Yeah. You just don't know where it's going to take you. You know, you're you're. <laughs> If you're highly motivated to, you know, come up with new ideas and new things, uh, having that flex space to do those things. Um, I mean, I remember the first, uh, you know, giant electronics load that we bought from Best Buy many, many years ago. Well, Best Buy just said, OK, here's what you have to have. We have to be able to back our semi trailer into your building. Whoa. We're going to leave it there for 24 hours. You, you can unload it and sort it. And then then we're going to come pick it up. So we had that flex space because we had, you know, a huge empty bay yeah. and they could back into all that kind of stuff. Otherwise I'd have been thinking, okay, how the heck I'm going to do it. And then when I made you the start awful building, building tents. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, on the, on the flip side, when I made the horrible decision to try to get in the TV business, I said, well, we'll just, we don't have enough room. We're going to, you know, we, we dumped uh, five empty shipping containers in the back parking lot and we filled those full of, uh, what was, you know, worthless uh, televisions <laughs> eventually. But uh, at the time it was a great idea or I thought it was, yeah, but yeah. Uh, so you want that flex space, man. It's, 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 it can really lead you down to stuff you haven't even thought about, but to get any of those spaces, if you're, if you're renting, you're going to have to sign a lease. 
right? Yeah. And and let's spend a few minutes talking about the lease. We're, we're just barely going to touch it, and then we'll give you some you know some good resources to to uh, you know find more information out. But the the first thing to remember is no matter what real estate agent you're using, is you know is these guys are going to make you know five to six percent per year for the life of your lease. So you you want to be sure you're really getting some good representation that you're not you know maybe getting pushed into a spot that is going to make someone else more money than you you know versus what's going to meet your needs uh you know for your for your building right um and, and before you again fall in love with this place you need to see what the terms are and you need to kind of familiarize yourself with what some standard lease terms like industrial gross, triple net, and that kind of thing. We'll, we'll put a link up from eforms.com. I love their site because you can basically go through and create a sample lease. It um, doesn't cost anything. And, and you can see all these terms that start popping up and you can become familiar with them and educate yourself. Um, like you mentioned, Dave, a couple of you know very basic, two different kinds of leases. Gross, one monthly fee, pays for everything. Those are fantastic. I love it. There's no surprises. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a lease that you might have uh, on an apartment. Yeah, it, it, sure. a lot of times it includes your, you know, your utilities or whatever. And it's just one price and you're done. Yep. Or you got it, <laughs> which is N N N, as in sometimes I would say no, 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 <laughs> you know, because it, it, it can save you money, but it can also really you know, kind of uh, sneak up on you with some, some surprises. Yeah. It's basically, you know, monthly rent plus expenses for things like common area maintenance, which could be, Hey, the parking lot has to be uh, repaved and it's going to be uh, $40,000. And if there's, you know, four tenants and you're going to split it, it's going to be 10 grand. 10 a grand. Year. Yep. It, and, uh, and I've, I've been, uh, I, it, it, my first triple net lease I had heard about them, but I never had seen one before and it was presented to me and it was just, it was like boilerplate and, sure. and probably the same lease that most people sign everywhere. But because yep. it was my first one, I'm like, Oh, well, this is crazy. Like you have a, you can like the, the rent that you're charging me is almost irrelevant. You have the ability, as I said to the, my, our, our landlord, uh, you have the ability to force me to write you a blank check every month. Because your common area maintenance is very loosely defined. And so I went through and I said, what are these things? They're like, well, it's just common area maintenance. It's just any fees. I'm like, that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No problem. I, I get it. We're, we're on the hook for that. Let's list what they are. And so I sat yes. down with them yeah. and, and we listed all of these things and we put it in the lease. Great. Yeah. And then six months later, we get a common area maintenance bill normally it was like you know whatever it was maybe i think we were paying it was it was office space so it wasn't really retail it was one of those sort of things it was actually for backbeat media down in austin but uh it was you know i think we were paying I don't know, let's say 500 bucks a month in, in rent sure. and then our our common area fees were like 150 bucks so okay fine one month i get a bill and it's fifteen hundred dollars and yeah. it's like, OK, they're like, well, you have well, to pay this. Yeah, we needed the new uh, X, Y, Z. Well, no, they said, well, we had some legal fees because somebody oh. slipped or I don't know. They, they uh, wouldn't, yeah. It was yeah. very nebulous. They wouldn't tell me what they were. But I said, well, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, legal fees are not on our common area maintenance. Like that's yeah, not on that's the list. Good. And they're like, what do you mean it's not on the list? I said, well, go ahead into your file and take that lease yeah, out. I've smart. got I've got my copy here, but I know you're going to want to see it on yours. And they pull it out. And of course, there's addendum one that has this list. And it's like, yeah, there's no legal fees there. So why don't you recalculate that? And they did. They yeah. recalculated it was 150 bucks or whatever, you yeah. know, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just you got to be careful, you know, because it's also things like property taxes. Yep. Um, and if, you know, if they sell the building uh, and you're still there and the property, you know, if the building building was worth 200,000 when the guy bought it, you know, 20 years ago, and now it's worth $2 million. This is, you know, if you're in California, uh, the, all those taxes are going to, you know, skyrocket and you're going to be on the hook for that. Yep. And, and based on your square footage. So, you know, if you only have 5,000 square feet, you're going to pay less than the the company that's got 50,000 square feet in the, in the same building. Right. But, that's usually how um, it works. They take the yeah, total square yeah. footage of the building and yep. and uh, divide that up by percentage wise by how much you have versus the total square footage. And then that's the percentage that you owe of your common area maintenance. Yeah. That's right. And so I would argue that you should 
try to negotiate industrial gross leases as much as possible. Uh, I think it's much harder to do uh, in a retail and maybe even an office space. Yeah, um, it's tough. a little easier in the in a, uh, an industrial spot. Um, but but you got to know what's going on. I really like that idea, Dave, of listing anything that it could be to help you avoid, you know, them just adding whatever they want. I, on I don't there. like I surprises. I mean, yeah. you're going to wind up with surprises anyway, but I like to limit them and just like, okay, what do you, what yep. do you, what you, you've run this? You're not the first, you know, this isn't the first time you're leasing this. What show me an example of what these things are. Great. Yeah. Let's list it yep. down. You want to look at the last 12 months? No problem. What's in you here? It. Let's, That's let's it. put it down. Now yep. we're all signing the same agreement. Now we yeah, all know the great. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And yeah, I mean, we're running a little long, but I still, I want to kind of hit some, just graze over a few of these other things and then we'll give you some links to learn more. But, you know, some of the things in the lease that you need to know, you know, what kind of rent increases are, are they going to build in over time? Cause you know, they're not going to be happy just collecting the same amount every year. What utilities are you responsible for? Responsible for really important. What insurance are you required to have in order to be in that building that can really impact your bottom line. Um, and if they sell the property, can they cancel your lease? So you could be forced to move, that, you know, really important. And also what happens if things go wrong and you turns out you don't need the space or you don't need as much space. Can you sublet? Is there, is there an addendum in there that if, you know, they approve the person, can you sublet it? Um, and then, you know, one of the, the negotiable parts of looking for a space and in that lease is what improvements is the uh, building owner willing to do for you? Are they, will they build out offices? Typically they want to do paint and carpet and then leave it as is, but do you need some walls built? Do you need, you know, whatever do you, does it have a kitchen? Do you need to build a kitchen? And, you know, in my experience, the more stuff you continually ask them to do, the less chances of getting a really, you know, a, uh, a discount on the rent. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we found we try to get them to throw in, you know, a couple months free rent or whatever it is in the, in the, in the beginning. And then we'll pay for those improvements. We typically saved money. Um, but your, you know, mileage may vary on that. Uh, that's a, I, um, I never, I never thought to negotiate that way. We, we, we weren't doing major improvements anywhere, but that's really sure. interesting is saying, Hey, look, let us paint the, the thing and we'll, we'll roll carpet in here. Yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, because they're going to use the cheapest stuff they can get their hands on. Uh, of course, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to build out a nice lobby, or you need some special this or special that. Say, look, you know, give me three months rent, uh, you know, free, and and oftentimes what they'll do if they're smart is they give you those three months free on the back end. Yes, yeah, because they not want their the, money not on the front. front. They right. want the money. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, you get months ten, eleven, and twelve free. Yeah, not, not exactly. One, two, or three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that's just the basics there. There's a lot to delve into. We'll put some um, really good links up on the, in the show notes and up in the Facebook group at uh, businessshow.co slash Facebook. And uh, you know, we encourage you to dig in and learn more and uh, to also share your stories and give us your feedback at uh, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear your stories about your lease and your successes and, and your horror stories too, because you know, we love those. We do love horror stories and uh, yeah. g- make yeah. sure you visit that Facebook page because i think we're going to have a little giveaway going uh over the next week or two it's you know it's the holidays i think we are right you know, so. yeah it's giving tuesday or something like that giving it wednesday giving. <laughs> oh yeah that's right we're recording this on giving tuesday yeah, there you go there you go yeah, yeah, perfect man. cool good stuff thanks so much this was fun i like this now i want to go like rent space i don't need space <laughs> but it, I, I, yeah. I, I you want to go buy a building and become a landlord that's what you want to do yeah that's what yeah it, maybe it is maybe yeah it is. yeah Thanks so much for listening, folks. Make sure to check out uh, Storyblocks at storyblocks.com slash SBS for that deal. That helps us and it helps you. That's all we got. Hey, uh, make sure you keep living that charmed life. See you next week, Shannon. (laughs) Take care, everybody.